Americans are affected by MS, which is why our friends at Genentech want to spread awareness about the condition. So here to tell us what we need to know is board certified neurologist and MS specialist at the Joy Life Wellness Clinic, Dr. Mitzi Joy Williams, and the founder of the advocacy group, We Are Ill, Victoria Reese. Hello, Dr. Williams. Hi. Hello, welcome, Victoria. So I know a lot of us have heard of MS, but I don't know if everybody knows exactly what MS is. Dr. Williams, can you explain that? Absolutely. So MS is an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks the central nervous system, and that includes the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerve to the eye. It's a disease of young people. People are diagnosed between the ages of 20 and 40. Hmm. And sometimes the symptoms can be confused with other things. So people may have a delayed diagnosis, numbness and tingling, weakness, visual changes. And we want people to be evaluated early because early diagnosis and starting treatment with high efficacy therapy could potentially delay long-term disability. Okay, I didn't know that between 20 and 40. 20 and 40. Wow. Okay, so Dr. Williams, are there certain groups who are more at risk for developing MS? Absolutely. So traditionally, MS has been thought of as a young white woman's disease. Mm. Um, we know that women are much more affected, but there are recent studies suggesting that actually it's occurring a lot more commonly in black and Hispanic Latinx communities mm. than we previously thought. And there are also studies suggesting that the incidence may be highest in black women. And this is really important because there's more disability that could occur. Yeah. Um, there also is more, um, you know, uh, physical changes over time. And we don't have enough research with these populations to understand why we're seeing those trends. Wow. You know, Victoria, as a black woman, and Dr. Williams is talking about our group, can you tell us what your experience is with MS? Sure. So I was diagnosed in 2012 at the age of 25. Um, I just started to pursue my career as a talent agent in Los Angeles, and I started to notice I was having numbness and tingling in my legs. Mm -hmm. um, it actually took me about like six months to actually see a doctor about it because I thought it would pass. Yeah. Um, but when I did go see my primary care physician, I was dismissed and I was told that it was just stress. Um, so I actually, my symptoms started to get worse. And one day I woke up with an excruciating migraine and I had numbness in my face. So they sent me to get more MRIs and that MRI came back showing nine lesions on my brain. So Nine legions on your brain? Mm -hmm. So it was confirmed that I had MS. And I was really shocked because I thought it was a white woman's disease as well. And I was terrified because I knew that that was the first day of my new normal. Well, you know, it, w Dr. Williams, if, if you know that there's no cure for MS, mm -hmm. Then what is the research that's being done to help patients? Yeah, so there's a lot of research that's being done. It's a really exciting time in the field of MS. And we manage MS like we manage other chronic conditions. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about is the focus on diversity and inclusion in clinical trials. Mm. And we're actually partnering with Genentech, and I lead um, the CHIMES trial, which is the first ever clinical trial focused on black and Hispanic Latinx people oh. living with multiple yes. sclerosis. So we're really excited about it. Um, and in a group where people often say, oh, pe these people don't want to participate in trials, we actually enrolled ahead of time and we over-enrolled. We have more people mm. than we anticipated. So really exciting, but we certainly need more research and we want people to get involved and talk to their healthcare providers about how they can get involved in research and in what ways. I'm so glad to hear that. If that you're paying attention to us. But it, what, is there any advice that you would give to somebody who was recently, who has been recently diagnosed with MS? Yeah, so my advice would be to get involved in the MS community, okay. find your community, and to utilize the resources that are available because there are resources available. Um, after I was diagnosed, I noticed there was a lack of representation of black women in the MS space. I mm. didn't see myself. So I was inspired to start my own advocacy organization, We Are Ill. We Are Ill. <laughs> yes, and we are redefining what sick looks like and ultimately uh, hel helping black women have better health outcomes. And I think educating yourself is also important. We recently sat down and had a conversation as part of the MS Visibility Project, um, and there were black women from all different connections to MS, care partners, people living with MS, and myself as a physician. And we talked about things like how to advocate for yourself, mm -hmm. what's unique to our experience, what does it mean to be vulnerable? Um, and I think that we have to have these conversations and that turn into a video series that people can view. So we want them to join the conversation. Yeah, and that would have been that... Um... 
knowing how to advocate for yourself might have saved you a lot. You know, you might have found out earlier yeah. about MS. And yeah. that's such a big deal. We go to the doctor and they don't, they dismiss us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love that. And that's a set of videos that, that we can see. Yeah. Ladies, thank you so much. I want to thank you both for being here, Dr. Williams and Victoria. For more info and to watch the full videos from the MS Visibility Campaign, check out gene.com slash MS. We'll be right back.